it is, of course, um, a very sad day, is it not? Um, a great figure in our national life, a genuine war hero, one of the last of that wonderful band of men and women who served in the last war, married to the Queen for 73 years, a devoted father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, and entirely in his own way, a truly remarkable man. Yes, and the Queen, of course, uh, describing him quite often as her constant strength and guide. I don't think there is any doubt about that, and she expressed it very beautifully at, uh, I think, uh, one of the Golden Jubilee uh, celebrations when she said exactly that. And I think that he gave her, from the very beginning of their life together, great stability and confidence, and he was the absolute rock and heart of that family. That is no doubt at all. And he was a great character too, wasn't he? I don't know whether you met him on a number of occasions, but he was a, gr he was a great character and the public loved him. Well, um, I had the great, great honour of, of knowing Prince Philip for nearly 60 years. And he was much, much more than a great character. He was a man of, he had the most wonderful sense of humour uh, he had great wit, he had great charm, he had tremendous authority, and he was a man with no side, whatever. What you saw was what you got. And um, I think when people refer to him as a character, they demean the very big man he was. I mean, after all, he, he wrote some very, very good books. He was incredibly knowledgeable. He was a great, he, tremendous knowledge of technology and engineering. Um, he had great knowledge of science. He was a great patron of the sciences. He was an environmentalist. He was a painter. He was an extraordinary man in so many different ways. And we really are going to miss him. We're going to miss him very much. And you referred uh, earlier in the chat to, uh, a, to his military service. And it was a serious military service. It was active duty in the Second World War and uh, second in command of a Royal Navy ship. I mean, it was a, a serious military career? It was indeed a very distinguished military career. Um, exceptional war service, the Battle of Matapan. Uh, he, he, he served with great distinction in the Royal Navy, um, was mentioned in dispatches. Um, and I think that his Royal Navy upbringing and his, his life in the Navy was really the background of his life. I think it gave him all many of the very great qualities that he had, and he was revered by the men and women of the armed services in all generations because of his experience and because of the way that he dealt with them. I mean, he, he, he was such a, a wonderful man to be with, and um, he was completely natural in everything that he did. And um, I, for one, am going to, I do feel that I was very, very, very privileged to have known him even slightly. And um, I think, um, I, I, like everyone else in this country, is going to find that we miss him very much indeed. Absolutely. And Sir Nicholas, you said he was a wonderful man to be with. Give us a, uh, an inkling of what he was like if you were maybe on your own with him. What was, what was he like as a man? What was he like to be with? Well, he was completely straightforward. And if he thought you were talking rubbish, he told you. Um, you know, this is the sort of thing about Prince Philip. They, the papers adore this sort of line that he kept putting his foot in it. and He was just a perfectly normal, uh, ordinary man, really, and he wasn't going to be anything else that he wasn't. And he was brought up to call a spade a spade. And I think he was part of a generation that was a great deal tougher than we are, and he himself had a very tough life. He had a very, very difficult childhood. Um, you know, his military service was a great thing to him. He gave up. Um, a glittering military career. I'm absolutely in no doubt of that in order uh, to be a permanent consort to the Queen. And as the Prime Minister said today, I thought in a very, very moving address uh, that he was the longest serving consort of all time. And uh, I think that he kind of is the role model for the job. I don't think anyone has ever had to do such a thing as he did. And he did it with such distinction with great charm, great wit, great humour, and he was, above all, an unbelievable rock, solid rock and support 
to the Queen, who today our thoughts and prayers must go out to. Absolutely. And I mean, the Queen has had time to prepare for this. We've all had time to prepare for this in a sense, but still for her, just the most enormous loss. Well, to lose your husband, who you much loved for seven, of 73 years, is a about as big a blow as you could ever sustain. So um, we almost think of the Queen and her family. And we were talking just on the, the kind of man he was. I was talking to Martin Palmer, who set up an organisation, a conservation organisation with uh, the Duke of Edinburgh. And he said, we had some blazing rows sometimes, he said. And that was because he knew what he wanted and he knew what he wanted to say and he wasn't frightened of saying it, he said. But uh, we always resolved it in the end because he was so determined to get things done. Well, Prince Philip was one of those people in life um, of which there are many, but not often recognised, he was a tremendous doer. And I thought that interview before with Martin was extremely telling. I thought he got him absolutely to a T. But he was a doer and he was impatient to get stuff done. Uh, and he could see a way ahead. Um, I wrote, I read one of his books, not a year ago, called A Question of Ballads, which are a series of essays that he wrote. And they have a sort of slight theological touch to them and they're visionary and I was incredibly taken by the power and authority of the way he wrote and it was very much the way he spoke and he did have this great air of authority to him which was difficult to deny and every now and again those who got on the wrong side of him probably got it in the neck and a jolly good thing too.